There we go. It, do, it is dependent on what you have selected, and you could also have multiple brushes selected at one time and clip them. Very cool. So with this fr one brush selected, I then go and say clip, and then that side gets clipped off. Notice how it doesn't show in the in a textured view until we rebuild geometry. But right now we wouldn't necessarily want to rebuild geometry, would we? No, because that would uh, that would get rid of all our undos. After you've rebuilt geometry, that's it. You either if you want it back, you have to just edit it back or create a new one. So go ahead and make your top view active again. And now let's go ahead and undo that. Okay. So now you can flip that if you want, right? Right. By using the flip normal button, it's now pointing to the other way. And if we were to clip that, then you can see. Got to be careful about clipping, making sure that you have the right viewport active when you do it. There you right. go. Now you can see the other side was clipped. Okay. Very cool. So let me go and undo that. Bring it back. Okay, and what else can you show us now about working with these clip markers? Well, you notice that, um, well, both times I all I did was a clip, and when I clipped it, one side got deleted. If we wanted to keep both sides and separate this into two brushes, we could use split. And split uh, with split the normal, or the way that extra arrow is pointing, is irrelevant, because both sides will remain. So if I was to split this brush... Then you can see that both brushes remain, and I could probably go in and move one of them out just a little so you can see that they're two separate brushes now. Very nice, very nice. But again, if we rebuild geometry, we're going to lose our undos for that. Right. Okay. And notice how I left the mode and came back into it, and it kind of remembers where I had the clip markers, but we're not sure. Well, the last button down here is to delete all the existing clip markers, so we'll go ahead and delete those out just to make sure we clear things out. Now, the, one, uh, the last type of clipping we can do is an actual 3D plane type clip. For, this, we, for these last clips, we've been using just two clip markers and then looking straight from the top view. If we wanted to say cut, and then we were cutting straight down, of course. If we wanted to cut at more of an angle, we'd have to use a third clip marker so we could define more of how we want this uh, supposed split plane to be uh, positioned. So let me go in and re-add those first two, control uh, right-clicking. So I've got two clip markers. Now let me go into a different view, and let me zoom in a little, and let me go and add a third. We can control and right-click down here at the corner. And now I've got a kind of angled plane going on here. Let me kind of control left drag that around a little bit, so we'll cut straight to the corners. Yeah, so control left drag will allow you to reposition. Right, you can things. go in and reposition your clip markers. Very nice. So now with that in place, that isn't dependent on a certain orthographic view because now it has it can off of these three markers generate a 3D plane in a sense. So it would work from a, say a, a 3D perspective view. Now if I was to go ahead and do a clip perspective uh, clip selected. Now you can see it cut off, but at a 3D angle. So we could have gone in there and moved that clip marker to wherever we wanted to define this angle or what part got clipped. Okay, very nice. So now, at this point, you can go ahead. Let's just rebuild geometry now, and you can see what we've done to this poor thing. So now you can see where we sliced that off and added a flat face to it. Very nice. Now you've got to be careful, because when you start getting in there and actually using these this clipping method, you can... Uh, relatively easily crash Unreal Ed if you're not really careful about, as Logan was saying just a second ago, making sure correct viewports are active, et cetera, et cetera. Right, or if you cut through certain points and generate it in an invalid shape or stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so uh, let's see, what else? Let's go ahead and take a look now at some vertex editing. All right, so let me go ahead and delete this little cylinder out now, and let me rebuild geometry to clear it out. So finally, let's add a cube and vertex edit it a little. I'm going to go and grab and bring it down to 256 again, make it more manageable, easier to see. Zoom out a little, bring that to the center of our construction room, and go ahead and add it. So now with this cube in place, let me drag the builder brush out of the way again. And here we go. I'm also going to change the perspective to a wireframe, just so you can get an idea of what vertices I'm grabbing in 3D. So, in order to actually drag vertices, I'll go in and enter vertex editing mode. And with vertex editing active, I'll select this brush. Now, I can click on any vertice I want to select it. I could hold control and click on one, and then I can see it's selected. I might also go ahead and turn on large vertices, just so it's easier to see. So now if I go down to my wireframe and look around, you can tell that those two vertices are selected. 
Let me also turn on the real-time preview so that you can see vertices as I drag them around. So in the top view, if I was to control and left drag, you can see I'm moving that those uh, vertices. Looks like I might have two cubes on top of each other. Let me move that back over. I'm going to move and turn large vertices off. And, and you do. Yes, I do. Let me delete one of those really quickly. Move this back and rebuild geometry. Okay, this will be a little bit easier to see now. Vertex editing mode, large vertices, control, left click on a single vertex. So you don't have to marquee around to select all the way down. Um, it depends. That's it's not. It doesn't always work that way. You have to be careful. As for marquee, I would definitely marquee select to ensure that you grab one of those. Like from the perspective view, you could control and grab single vertices, and using control to add or take away from the selection. And of course, if you wanted to make sure that you grabbed a series of vertices, I would use the control alt left drag. So then you can see I, I grab both of those. I can hold control and move them around. One thing I'd like to point out is um, when you're working with vertices, I would recommend against, if at all possible, if, like, if you drag that one single vertice, you can see it's starting to kind of warp the shape a little bit. And that's one area where you could kind of get into trouble working with vertices. It's better to go and grab both vertices at the same time and move them because then you have more of a, a uniform shape. Okay, of course, it can be a bit complete, uh, confusing for those by watching up in the top view when he does that, because when you move that one selected vertex over in the top view, it looks like you actually have the bottom one that's being left behind. Well, that's just uh, the view. It hasn't updated yet. Exactly. I'm just pointing that out that, yeah, that can right. be kind of confusing, because it's actually taking place in the viewport that's active and the one that you're working with, and so you'd kind of expect that to update. Don't let that confuse you. You can just verify down in your perspective view that everything is indeed selected properly. Okay. And, of course, you can grab more than just a, a single row of uh, column of vertices. You could control, control drag over, say, four of them, and then move them all together. Okay, very nice. Also, one last thing with the control drag. Notice how if I control alt left drag over the bottom, I've lost my selection on the first two. Or if I control alt over just these two, now I have two vertices selected. If I wanted to keep using the control alt drag, but grab more vertices and not lose my old selection, I can do control alt shift and then drag. And when I drag, I won't lose my old selection. Okay, excellent. So, we've pretty much already talked about rebuilding a couple of times throughout this lesson. Well, it's very important, and it can also work against you when you're in there actually doing brush clipping by kind of getting rid of those undos if you needed to go in there and flip your actual clip plane. But now I think we've covered everything that we set out to cover in this very basic lesson of working with BSP brushes. You guys already know now how to add brushes in, use subtraction brushes. You also know how to go in there and intersect brushes. You see now why we're using the construction zone uh, so that we can do things like intersecting without any problem. Uh, we also uh, did some brush clipping. We took a look at it doing it in a, t a 2D state and also in a 3D state. And then we wrapped it up with doing a little bit of vertex editing. So that's going to wrap up this lesson right here. Thanks, everyone.